Can the planet wait for COVID immunity in Africa? The various COVID vaccination programs around the world are happening independent of one another. This makes what is being accomplished in the United States for example, a far cry from what is occurring in Africa. The United States can achieve her immunity of 70% of the population vaccinated by July of this year while in Africa this will not happen for seven and a half years. In the United States, a human error damaged 15 million Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Johnson & Johnson has guaranteed that this will not affect the fulfillment of the 24 million plan to be delivered by the end of April. For this emergency, there were no production problems. How will these issues affect vaccinations and can the planet wait for COVID immunity? There were production problems, however, a month and a half ago, when J&J announced that a producer had a problem verifying vials. In that case, the company, while announcing that this would reduce production and consequently 40% of the first supply to the United States, put on the table the possibility of moving the fill and finish to the United States. Supposedly this should not have worried Europe, which would have continued to receive the expected 200 million doses by the end of 2021, provided, of course, that the United States would not impose limitations on the export of vaccines as it happened a year ago for ventilators, masks, and gloves FEMA order of April 10. In addition, three weeks ago, Reuters announced that J&J &J could have been unable to supply Europe with the 55 million doses scheduled for June due to a supply problem, and in this case, Apparently it was not possible to put in place the mechanisms used to neutralize the impact of the 15 million doses incident. In Europe, the problems encountered in some countries with the use of AstraZeneca could slow down a vaccination campaign that is running quite efficiently, albeit with some difficulties. For example, in Italy, where the extraordinary commissioner for the emergency has set a target of 500,000 vaccinations per day, three regions have just found themselves without supplies although this problem has produced only a small delay in the vaccination plan. A neat article from about two weeks ago provides interesting explanations of what has happened and what is happening in the United States and Europe, which, with respect to this issue, have behaved like different planets. A third planet is Latin America, where vaccines have started arriving three months after vaccinations began in Great Britain. And, despite having contracted with the same suppliers as Europe, it has had to wait, and continues to wait, longer than Europe, ending up relying heavily on Chinese vaccine supplies. And then there is the fourth planet, Africa, which, with the exception of Morocco, depends mainly on the COVAX program, although two problems have been overlooked, of which, in the absence of vaccines, the relevance had been underestimated the insufficiency of qualified health personnel and the limited resources for local management after delivery. And there would be more planets Great Britain, Asia with the sub-planets of China and India, Oceania each with its own supply and vaccination policy. Results, EU 25% of the doses supplied, Europe 12%, Latin America 8%, Africa 2% of which Morocco represents almost 70%. On all these planets, the goal is the same, to reach herd immunity as soon as possible, but as soon as possible can have very different meanings. If herd immunity is defined as having vaccinated 70% of the population over 15 years of age, and if vaccinations continue at the same rate, which obviously, especially on some of these planets, will not happen, because the number of daily vaccinations is much higher than the average during the first months of the vaccination campaign, this result would be reached, in the United States, in July of this year, in Europe, at the end of 2022, in Latin America in April 2023, in Africa leaving aside the data for Morocco, in seven and a half years. Unfortunately, there are no different planets. The planet is one, and the consequences of what happens anywhere on it affect it globally. Backwardness in Africa is not an African problem. It is a global problem. The rich countries cannot ignore the difficulties of vaccination in Africa, which will not be solved by donations which, unless there is a much greater commitment on the part of all countries, will only serve to buy coffins, while the virus will continue to spread and mutate, thus jeopardizing the false security that these countries may have the illusion of having achieved. In the first months of the pandemic, Cuba could afford to send health personnel to Italy to make up for the problems that Italy was having. Is it unthinkable that rich countries should do something similar in Africa? Likewise, these countries should seriously consider whether, at the next meeting of the World Trade Organization, 
it is in their interest to continue defending the abstract principle of the protection of intellectual property rights or whether it is not more in the interest of the planet and their own to relax this principle in pursuit of greater and more effective security. Among the countries that are opposing the proposal of India and South Africa to suspend these rights during the pandemic are Mexico and Brazil. Will they continue in their position, ignoring the urgency for them to defeat the pandemic? A further rejection of a majority proposal in a UN system organization could have devastating effects on the confidence of poorer countries in the UN system. The post-pandemic world may have new geopolitical balances. Should the rich countries be more concerned about this or about the interests of the pharmaceutical companies? We must leave aside the theoretical problem of the greater or lesser legitimacy of these interests, which in any case can be perfectly well respected and guaranteed with adequate compensation less costly than the long-term negative effects on the world economy. The war against the virus throughout the planet must be won, not only a few battles in the rich countries. This article was co-authored by Galileo Violini. Hashtag Rebuilding Travel